Hello friends, welcome to video series on geography. In this video, I will be explaining about mountain building process or orogeny. There are different kinds of mountains, namely fold mountains, block mountains, volcanic mountains. I will be explaining them in detail. And also I will be explaining about important mountain ranges in the world. Mountain building processes are tectonic movements that involve folding of sediments, faulting and metamorphism of earth's crust. To understand mountain building or orogeny, it is important for us to understand basic principles underlying the formation of mountains like faulting, folding etc. In this picture we see how faulting takes place. There are different types of faults, normal fault, thrust fault, transcurrent or transform fault. These faults happen mainly because of compressive or tensile forces acting on parts of earth's crust. For example, under tensile forces that is where two blocks are pulled away from each other, then a block in between them would simply slide below which leads to normal fault. It is because of extension or tensile forces. In the other kind of fault, where two blocks push the uh, block in between uh, from each side, then the block would rise. This is called thrust, uh, thrust fault and this is due to compression and it is also called as reverse fault. In the, other fo in the other kind of fault, which is transcurrent or transform fault, the, bl uh, the blocks of earth's crust simply slide uh, horizontally. Thus, there is no upward or downward movement involved. There is only horizontal movement involved. Hence, this is called as horizontal movement or uh, um, faults happening due to horizontal movements, whereas the other two are happening due to vertical movements or the other two involve vertical movements. Another important basic concept in orogeny is folding. Folding is a process in which two continental crustal plates move towards each other compressing the sediments that are present in between these two plates and as a result of this compression this sediments undergoes deformations giving rise to a fold. As you can see in this figure the folds can be of different types. For example if the fold the slope of the fold is upwards then it is called as an anti-syncline and if the slope of the fold is downwards then it is called syncline. Also there are various other folds like recumbent fold etc which we will be seeing in detail later. Now let us see classification of mountains on the basis of location. The mountains are classified into continental mountains and oceanic mountains based on their location whether they are on, present on continents or in oceans. And in continental mountains there are coastal mountains and inla inland mountains. The examples for coastal mountains are Rockies in western part of North America, Appalachians which are eastern part of USA, Alpine mountains which are uh, in northern Italy that is southern, uh, southern Europe, western Ghats and eastern Ghats which are parts of India and in inland mountains there are mountains such as Vosges and Black Forest which are part of uh, Europe mainly present in Germany and uh, France. Then the other peaks such as other ranges such as Kunlun, Tianshan and Altai which are parts of Asia that is surrounding China, Kazakhstan etc. And Urals of Russia, Aravallis, Satpura and Michael range of India. These ranges are present in central part of India whereas Aravallis are a part of western India present in Rajasthan. And coming to oceanic mountains they are found both on continental shelves as well as, as, well as ocean flows. We will see in detail when dis, uh, discussing oceanography. And one important factoid is that Mount Kia which is 900, around 9000 meters uh, high from its mountain base can be considered as the highest mountain in the world if its height is considered from mountain base instead of sea level. For now the highest mountain in the world is Mount Everest. It is about 8850 meters above sea level. but this mountain is only 4000 meters above sea level but if its height is considered from the base it would be about 9000 meters. And let us see the location of different mountains we have discussed. Vosges mountains which is a part of northeastern France, Black Forest which is a part of uh, western Germany and Ural mountains which divide Europe from Asia they are present in uh, Russia, 
they are the most um, major industrial base, uh, so mineral base of Russia. You can see broad picture picture of Ural Mountains. The other mountains like Himalayan Mountains in India, Kunlun Mountains, which are part of China and Himalayan system, Tianshan Mountains bordering Kazakhstan and major parts a major part of the mountain is present in China Altai, Altai mountains which are at the convergence of all these four countries namely Russia Russia Mongolia China and Kazakhstan and mountains are also divided on the basis of period of origin since the birth of earth there has been nearly nine orogenic or mountain building processes most of the mountain building processes took place in Pre-Cambrian times, which is from birth of universe till 500 million years ago, and the most important and the recent mountain building processes are called as Caledonian, Hercynian, and Alpine systems, which we'll discuss in detail. Pre-Cambrian mountains are the mountains which are born in during peak Pre-Cambrian super eon. Pre-Cambrian super eon extends from since the birth of Earth till 500 million years ago. That is the extent up to 4 billion years and these mountains are now just remained in the form of residual mountains because of various generational processes like erosion, uh, erosion weathering etc. So only their residual parts are found now. The best examples are Laurentian mountains which are part of North America and also Algoman mountains. Both these mountains surround uh, the Great Lake region. And Celadonian mountains are the mountains which originated during great mountain building processes that took place between late Silurian, Silurian and early Devonian periods. Let's see what are these geological time periods. And this is how time timeline of Earth is divided into super eons and then eons, then eras, periods, etc. And if you see after the end of Pre-Cambrian super eon, it is Paleozoic eon, which consists of Paleozoic era and in Paleozoic era which ranges from 570 to 225 million years ago there are periods such as Silurian and Devonian periods and the great mountain building process took place between these two periods that is from 440 million years ago to 395 million years ago and the Celadonian mountains were formed during this period. And these mountain mountains have northeast southwest alignment in northwestern part of Europe and also in the northeastern part of North America. So they are formed about 430 million years ago to 380 million years ago. And the best examples are Appalachians, which are northeastern, uh, which are present in northeastern part of USA, and Aravalis and Mahadevo hills, which are part of um, western and central India. So these are the parts of Celadonian mountains, the Appalachians which are part of northeastern USA and the, their counterparts are present in northern Canada, southern Greenland and parts of Iceland and few mountains in Scandinavia or the countries named in Norway, Sweden etc. So all these parts were formed were the same system of mountains called as Celadonian mountains which were formed about 380 million years ago as the continents moved away due to plate tectonics we can see these uh, mountain residues uh, remaining in different continents and in India there are mountains such as Aravalis which are part of western India and Mahadeva Maikala etc which are in central India all these also come under Celadonian mountains and the next type of mountains are called as Hercynian mountains these mountains are comparatively younger compared to Celadonian mountains they are formed in between 340 million years ago to 225 million years ago that is during Carboniferous to Permian period and in geological time scale Carboniferous is about 345 million years ago that is soon after the De Devonian period that is uh, after the ending of uh, the formation of Celadonian mountains and they lasted till 280 million or 240 million years that is until the Permian period which ends with the start of Mesozoic era so the formation of Hercynian mountains took place between these two periods and these type of mountains that is Hercynian mountains are found most, mostly in uh, part of uh, parts of Europe and Asia they are residual mountains much of them are, are very small peaks or sometimes remains as small plateaus etc 
some examples of Vosges and Black Forest, uh, which we have seen. Vosges is a part of northeastern France, and Black Forest, uh, mount, uh, Black Forest mountains are part of western Germany. And there are the mountains like Veriscan Mountains, which are also part of Europe. Altai and Tianshan. We have seen these mountains, the location of these mountains too. These mountains are part of a Sinian mountain building process. Uh, process. And Ural Mountains of uh, Russia, Pennines and Welsh Islands in Britain, and Haas Mountains in Germany, and high plateaus of Serbia and China. All these mountains are Harsinian Mountains, which are formed about 340 to 225 million years ago, that is between Carboniferous to Permian period. And the next mountain system is Alpine Mountain System, which is the youngest and the most recent mountain building process, significant mountain building process on Earth. And this has originated during tertiary period, that is about 65 million years to 77 million years ago. That is, they are very recent mountains. They are spread, their formation is spread across all these time periods like Paleocene, Eocene, Oligocene, Miocene, etc., which are part of tertiary period. The best example for these mountains are Rockies of North America and Alpine Mountains of Europe. We have seen the location of these two mountains and atlas mountains which are part uh, which are present in northwestern africa we'll see the location of these mountains too and the parts of himalayas there are various ranges namely Paminot, uh, taurus elbrus jagros and kunlun which are, which uh, forms part of uh, mountain system in uh, just above himalayas that is in central asia and the most important feature of these mountains is that they have very uh, they are lofty uh, loftiest that is have very high peaks this is because they being the youngest have been subjected to little amount of weathering and erosional processes and since these mountains are formed mainly due to tectonic processes their uh, summits are raising uh, with the passage of time hence these mountains are the loftiest and the most rugged mountain system in the world and based on the mode of origin mountains are further divided into tectonic mountains which involve fold mountains, block mountains and volcanic mountains all these are tectonic mountains and other ones are residual mountains residual mountains are simply the mountains which are left after various denudational processes have stripped the surfaces of um, the tectonic mountains and now we'll see the major types of mountains namely fold mountains, block mountains and volcanic mountains which are all of tectonic origin and the first and the most important types of mountains are fold mountains which are spread across all across the world and they are the most important system of mountains they are formed when sedimentary rock strata in geosynclines are subjected to compressive forces we have seen while discussing folding process that two crustal plates when they move towards each other due to various compressive forces acting on them then the sediments present between these two plates undergo folding that is they undergo folding that is increase in height the folding might be upwards or sometimes even downwards but in most of the cases the folding will be upwards and this depression which holds all these sediments is called as geosyncline thus when two crustal plates uh, involve crushing of a geosyncline then the strata the sedimentary uh, rock strata present between these in this geosynclines undergo folding and these are mainly due to compressive forces these mountains are the loftiest mountains we have already seen this that is they have most um, imposing height compared to other kinds of mountains and on the basis of different kinds of folds they are divided into simple fold mountains and complex fold mountains we'll see about them in detail simple fold mountains are mountains which have simple wave like structures Whereas complex mountain uh, fold mountains are the ones where th these wave-like structures gets deformed under various forces and gives rise to various kinds of folds, namely overfold, recumbent fold, or overthrust fold. So these kind of folds are called as complex fold mountains. That is, mountains formed due to this kind of complex folding is called as complex fold mountains. We can see different uh, folds, namely recumbent fold, overthrusted fold. Asymmetric folds. Asymmetric folds are the ones where uh, one side of the mountain has very less amount of slope, whereas other other side it's very steep. And when rocks of this recumbent fold, which undergo 
breaking and various uh, due to under various physical stress will fall apart and will be carried away due to various uh, erosional and depositional activities and these rock particles which are carried away are called as nappy that is overfolds and recumbent folds are detached from their roots and carried away few kilometers due to tectonic forces and these structures which are detached and carried away are called as nap and on the basis of origin fold mountains are further divided into young young fold mountains old fold mountains and very old fold mountains and the mountains that are formed in tertiary period are called as young fold mountains and the mountains that formed before tertiary period are called as old fold mountains and very old fold mountains for example celadonian and hercynian hercynian and aravallis of india and vindhyachal mountains are examples of old fold mountains because they were formed about 300 million years ago which is much before tertiary period and these mountains have thickening relict as they are called as thickening relict fold mountains that is uh, at the location of these mountains the the thickness of the crust is ever increasing because of various denudational processes and isostatic equilibrium the earth's crust is in isostatic equilibrium that is the relative densities are more or less the same for example if there is a high plateau in one region and the surrounding region is comparatively at sea level but uh, at this uh, stage they would have the same amount of densities that is this portion would have the same weight compared to, uh, with respect to this portion this is because though this is uh, much lower compared to this region it still is much denser compared to this region thus it will have the same weight as compared to this whole mass thus the whole system is in isostatic equilibrium but there, when there is a change happening that is when a mountain is formed somewhere here then it will lead to the change in isostatic equilibrium under this circumstances uh this region comes down and this region is lifted uh, to an extent where the isostatic uh, isostatic equilibrium is restored and under this kind of processes the fold mountains will undergo uh further downward movement giving rise to more or less a kind of a system where a fold mountains becomes uh, uh somewhat like a residual mountain leading to thickness of the earth's crust thickness is increasing over all this region this is called thickening relict and they are called as thickening relict fold mountains and the new fold mountains that is the mountains that are formed during tertiary period are uh, such as rockies ains alps and himalayas are much younger compared to these kind of old fold mountains are thickening relict fold mountains and coming to the characteristics of fold mountains they are the youngest mountain system on earth they are only about 300 to 400 million years old compared to the mountains of pre-cambrian era and they, they are fossiliferous as they are made up of uh, sedimentary rocks and they extend for great lengths for example rockies and and ends etc which are about 3 to 4000 kilometers in length and they have concave slope on one side and convex slope on the other side this is very general characteristic and as we have seen they are found mostly along continental margins with few ex exceptions like himalayas which are found between uh continents and they are found to have granite intrusions because of their sedimentary nature and they un undergo recurrent seismicity or this is because of uh, very ang nature and as these mountains are continuously evolving and as the plates move towards each other there is chances that there is too much of earthquakes in these uh, regions and they have recurrent uh, earthquakes taking place for example indo nepal border is one example where earthquakes have been very frequent and sometimes there might be volcanic activity too in himalayas the volcanic activity is very rare but in ains and very various other fold mountains volcanic activity is widespread and these mountains are the most widespread mountain systems uh, on earth they might even contain minerals resources such as tin copper gold etc while studying plate tectonics we have seen that different kinds of interactions happen takes place between uh, two crustal plates for example if plates move towards each other they give rise to convergent edge which is destructive in nature and if they move away from each other 
they will give rise to a divergent edge which is constructive in nature and in mountain building process most of the time it, it is convergence of two plates that is involved and based on different kinds of plates involved they are further classified as ocean ocean convergence ocean continent convergence continent continent convergence and continent island arc convergence and the first one is ocean ocean convergence or island arc convergence in this case a denser continental plate the first one is ocean ocean convergence or island arc convergence in this kind of con convergence an oceanic plate which is denser plunges below an oceanic plate which is less less denser for example this is the oceanic plate which is denser which is plunging into an oceanic plate which is less denser and this zone where the oceanic plate uh, plunges below the less denser oceanic plate is called a subduction zone and the subduction results in extreme amount of pressures created uh, in the neighborhood thus metamorphizing the rocks uh, surrounding it thus under intense heat and pressure these rocks converts into magma and this magma flows out in the form of volcanic eruptions and the volcanic ma lava which is flowing out might result in a landmass which is called as oceanic arc that is when it appears above sea level it's called oceanic arc one example for this is japan which is formed uh, by ocean ocean convergence and at the zone of subduction we see that there will be a, there will be a trench formed and this kind of convergence will lead to the formation of a continental crust replacing the oceanic crust for example japan which is formed in the which is found on the continental crust slowly ga raised upwards due to volcanic activity activity and become a continental crust the next one is continent ocean convergence or this is also called as cordilleran convergence this is because uh, the cordilleran western cordilleran mountains which are part of uh, north western north america were formed due to this kind of convergence here an oceanic plate which is quite denser plunges below a continental plate which is comparatively less denser giving rise to the upthrusting of the continental plate plate that is this plate would upthrust or move uh, upwards giving rise to a landform similar to a mountain uh, the rockies were is an example which were formed due to this kind of uh, convergence and here too the rocks will be metamorphized and sometimes might lead to uh, less intense volcanoes the other one is continent continent convergence one good example is in himalayan convergence where the indian plate which is a continental plate has plunged below a uh, asian asian plate which is also a continental plate but himalayan himalayan plate or indian plate being uh, quite denser has plunged below this plate leading through the uh, leading to the upthrust of the asiatic plate giving rise to himalayas and mountains such as alps urals etc are uh, produced due to this kind of convergence the next one is continent arc convergence that is where a continental plate plunges below an oceanic arc that is a uh, plate uh, consisting of uh, arc uh, arc islands like japan islands this kind of convergence is quite rare and is observed in new guinea which is formed due to this kind of convergence and in this figure we can see the formation of island arcs in this plane this is formed mainly due to ocean ocean convergence in the next type that is ocean and continent convergence which might lead to raised mountain system like uh, in ains rockies etc this is the example of ocean continent convergence next type is a continent continent convergence we can see a continental plate here is colliding with the continent plate here the denser one will subduct or undergo uh, will lead to a subduction zone giving rise to mountain system just like himalayas so this is what happens in folding when two plates move together it will lead to compression and then one plate which is weaker might fold or a plate can plunge below other give and the one will raise this is called thrusting and the same way sometimes when yeah, at the subduction due to subduction process they might give li give rise to a trench or sometimes the simply the plates would thicken and this give rise to thickening which is very rare and coming to the different types of mountains depending on their age they are angle angle mountains old fold mountains and very old fold mountains 
Himalayas are the examples of young fold mountains. They have rugged relief and they are lofty that is they have very high peaks and their peaks are conical in shape. Whereas the old fold mountains have slightly rounded features, medium elevation. One good example is Aravalli range in India. They have been considerably owed down due to weathering process. Thus they have slightly rounded features. And coming to very old fold mountains, Appalachians and Ural mountains are the examples of very old fold, mount fold mountains. They have highly rounded features and they are of low elevation. The next important kind, kind of mountains are called as block mountains. In these mountains, the earth's crust is displaced vertically, where the ones that is at higher elevation is called as host and at the lower elevation is called graben. In this kind of uh, mountain formation, a part um, mainly faulting occurs. We have discussed what is faulting in the beginning of the video. And in the faulting, due to tensile forces, that is where the forces are pulling two uh, crustal masses away from each other, then they might result in subduction of a certain part of uh, the region between them. This will give rise to a graven. Or in certain cases, where two when two crustal masses are pushing against each other due to compressive forces, then there is chances that uh, part of Earth's crust might get elevated, giving rise to a plateau-like structure. It is called as host. And the best example for these kind of mountains are Rhine Valley Mountains and Vosges Mountains. We have talked about Vosges Mountains, that is the mountains in the eastern part of uh, France. And these are called fault block mountains because faulting take place in these kind of mountains. They mainly cause due to tensile strengths as well as compressive forces. There are two types of mountains under this. One is tilted block mountain and the other one is lifted block mountains. In tilted block mountains, one side has a very steep uh, elevation whereas other one has comparatively low, less steep elevation. Because the block has been tilted, the block which was horizontal might be tilted to a certain angle, giving rise to this kind of formation. And in lifted block mountains, we can see this is kind of a lifted or uh, subducted uh, block mountain system. And the lifted block mountains have extremely flat slopes, we can see here. And this kind of mountain formation gives rise to rift valleys, uh, etc. We can see the Great African Rift Valley which is formed due to, due to this kind of mountain building process where the parts uh, in the valley which are go, which got subducted due to the outward movement of uh, the, uh, the related uh, earth's crust we will see some more features of block mountains we seen that they are formed due to faulting the example of Vosges and uh, black forest mountains the east african rift valley the, or the great african rift valley is formed due to this kind of uh, mountain building process and Due to denudation, these mountains undergo various structural changes, so they might appear differently uh, uh, after a certain period of time after formation. The other important kind of mountains are volcanic mountains, which are formed mainly due to volcanic activity. In this kind of mountains, magma, which is rich in silica, flows out, and as this is very viscous, forms successive layers around the peak of the mountain. So these successive layers might give rise to raising of the mountain and this way mountains are built for example mount kilimanjaro in africa and mount fujiyama are born are formed in this uh, kind of mountain building process these are also called as mountains of accumulation because uh, each time the magma flows out there it leads to accumulation of rock content one layer after the above and few more um, examples of this kind of volcanic mountains are Mount Fujiyama we have seen it's in Japan, Mount Mayon in uh, Philippines and the other one in Indonesia, My Mount Merapi and there are various other important mountains, volcanic mountains like uh, Mount Karkatavo which is also in Indonesia and in India the, uh, the mountains in barren islands uh, are volcanic in nature that is the only active volcano in that exists in India that is in Andaman and Nicobar Islands but in mainland India, we have no active volcanoes. And all the mountains, namely fold mountains, block mountains and volcanic mountains undergo denudational process over a period of time giving rise to residual mountains. These mountains have low elevations and well-rounded features. And these sometimes they just don't look like mountains. 
they might evolve in the form of plateaus etc and the examples being the highlands formed around uh, the river colorado in usa these are some of the important mountain ranges across the world andes are the longest mountain uh, system in the world which are spread along the western margins of south south america and rocky mountains on the western margins of north america great dividing ridge is a part of australia trans antarctic mountains are a part of antarctic region ural mountains that divide europe and russia sorry europe and asia and atlas mountains which are part of northwestern africa appalachian mountains which are in the eastern regions of usa himalayas between indian subcontinent and asia mainland asia and altai mountains which are uh, which are main part of uh, china which are at a region uh, where the four countries namely kazakhstan russia mongolia and china converge western ghats and aravalli ranges are part of india alps are present in southern europe that is in the northern parts of italy uh, covering about 8 to 9 countries and drakenberg mountains are in south africa we'll see all these mountains on a map so coming to the important mountain systems these are rockies and these are ains which are on western margins of south america and these are atlas mountains and these are alps and appalachians which are a part of celadonian mountains who have their counterparts in greenland iceland and scandinavia and himalayas here there are other few ranges like kunlun altai altai is between the convergence of all these four countries here and tanshan is somewhere here between mongolia sorry kazakhstan and china and this is drakenberg mountains which are part of south, south africa and the great dividing ridge is a part of australia they are found on the western margin western parts of australia these are the mo mo most important mountain systems this region is called great african rift valley which is formed due to faulting of uh, this block of uh, this block this is a form of block mountain or sorry block valley is a rift valley created due to faulting and there are few mountains here which are called as western cordilleras and this figure shows the highest mountain peaks uh, in each of the continents mount mckinley is the highest peak of uh, north america and mount aconcagua which is part of ants is the uh, highest peak in south uh, america and kilimanjaro in africa elbrus is in europe other important mountain in europe is mount blanc which is in alps the highest peak in australia is puncak jaya which is a part of indonesia though this part of indonesia is uh, comes under australia continent australia and the highest mountain in mainland australia is cos kesko and in asia it's uh, everest and in antarctic region it is winson massif let's see some important mountain ranges indies are the longest continental mountain range in the world they are spread across all these countries namely venezuela colombia ecuador peru bolivia chile and argentina and mountain mount aconcagua is the highest peak outside asia it is about 7000 meters in uh, high and the world's highest volcano namely osos del salado is on the borders of chile and argentina and ural mountains are the most important mineral source for russia and they are the oldest fold mountain systems in the world and they are also are rich in precious and semi precious stones and atlas mountains are present in northwestern africa mount topkal is the highest peak in this mountains they are spread ac across algeria morocco and tunisia morocco is somewhere here algeria and tunisia is somewhere here and the next one are rocky mountains they are the second la longest mountain system in the world they are spread across canada new mexico and usa and with this we have discussed all important mountain systems thanks for watching